Hello and good day. This is Corey from the Box Scholar YouTube channel and the WellRoundedPianist.com. I have a very interesting and useful video for you today. It is a 45 minute tutorial on Chopin's uh, Nocturne in C minor, Opus 48, number 1. I happen to be using the Henley edition here. You can use any edition you'd like. But this, this video is only on the last section. This is uh, typically uh, considered to be uh, Chopin's most difficult nocturne, technically. It's uh, usually rated as the most difficult of his nocturnes, and I will only be concentrating on the doppio movimento part here, uh, beginning in bar 49 that goes to the end. So I will not be, uh, I will not be uh, spending time on the beautiful first section. Um, this last section is, um, gives pianists a lot of difficulties and problems, mainly because of the four against three polyrhythms. And for that, I would highly recommend going and viewing my three against four polyrhythm video first before you come here, because I, I will not be explaining how to play three against four polyrhythms here in this video. I'll just be assuming you know how to do that and I'll put the hands together for that. So uh, another reason why it's difficult is, is there, there are lots of big stretches in both hands. Uh, you, you have to bring out a melody in the top finger while uh, these, these thick chords on the bottom. So this is, uh, you know, this, this last section deserves a whole tutorial in itself. And that's what this is. That's what I've done for you here in this, in this video, and I hope you can get something out of it. I have this, this 45 minute tutorial is divided up into six sections, and you can go to the bottom of this video, and uh, you can click on any of those timings uh, that I give there, and it will bring you directly to the section you want to go to. The first section is an, a little introduction on uh, attaining spider fingers and about having small hands or large hands and stretching out the fingers. The second section is a special spider exercise that I've developed especially for the playing of Chopin. And um, uh, many more of those can be found on the Well-Rounded Pianist. Uh, the third section is on uh, specifically on thumb placement and economy of motion. So it's a very, very important section here on economy of motion and thumb placement. The fourth section is on actually playing the three against four passages. I'll be isolating just those passages out of that section that, that have those three against four polyrhythms and going over those slowly with an overhead camera view. Then the fifth section is I will play uh, from beginning to end of that whole section with an overhead camera view. Uh, with metronome with no pedal. So you'll be able to hear and see everything perfectly with an overhead camera view. And then the sixth and final section, I'll do the same thing as I did in number five, but I won't have metronome on and I'll add pedal. But it's still at about half speed. So both sections five and six are similar uh, to my super slow videos, many of which, uh, or many, many of which you can see on the well-rounded pianist. Uh, some of which are also on YouTube. So, I hope you can get something out of this video. It has something for everyone in it. It has spider exercises. It has uh, economy of motion, placement of the thumb. That's in preparation for the uh, actual nocturne. And then the uh, fourth and fifth and sixth sections are actually dedicated to specifically to the last section of this uh, difficult nocturne. Uh, if you are of a beginning level of piano, I just probably wouldn't even attempt it. If you're upper intermediate to advanced level of piano, let's say if you're around grade six or so, then uh, you're, I think you're, you're probably able to attempt to learn this. Uh, I would probably categorize this around probably grades uh, 8 to 10, somewhere between grades 8 to 10. So it is difficult. But remember, I've slowed it down to half speed and I've taken out the pedals. So uh, what normally is very difficult will be a little easier to manage 
with the way that I'm presenting it and the way that I'm teaching it. And for more videos like this, many more videos, actually tutorials of all kinds, go to The Well-Rounded Pianist, become a member, and um, uh, I, I hope that this has something for everyone, something for you. Without any further ado, here is the tutorial on Chopin's 48, Opus 48, number one, Nocturne in C minor. Until we meet again, thank you. Hello and welcome to the tutorial on Chopin's Nocturne, Opus 48, number one. This is on especially only on the last section here, where it says Doppio Movimento, uh, measure 49. Before we go into this, uh, this uh, I, I've developed some spider exercises spy, to develop spider fingers, what I call it. And uh, I just want to explain a little about what that is and why it's important. When you play Chopin, uh, especially Chopin, even more than, I would say, even more than Liszt or Brahms or any other composer, uh, you need to really develop the, the ability to stretch more than, I think, any other composer. Uh, that's why Chopin's music is so difficult. Because, um, and it's especially difficult for pianists with small hands and, and, and short fingers. Now, uh, if you've watched any of my videos, especially the overhead views, you probably think, oh man, that Bob Scholar, he has really long fingers. Well, really, I don't. I am five feet seven inches tall. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in, in European measurements, but that is not tall at all for a man. And uh, my, my hands are not large. My fingers aren't even long. I think they're quite short and stumpy looking, actually. But when you when I play the piano, I feel like they're long. They, they sort of morph into long fingers when I'm on the piano. So just to let you know, I don't, I'm not blessed, I'm not born with long fingers. It's just that I've developed the ability through many years of playing to stretch and, and to get out of the five finger mode. So the first tip I, I need to tell you today is get out of the five finger mode okay if you if you've learned the five finger you know that what we all learn as beginners you need to just abandon that altogether and stretch your fingers out almost never will you find five finger positions in chopin or really in any other advanced music for that matter so what i would suggest to do is every day just do this every day just Fan out your fingers as far as they'll go, okay? And there, there's a little tension there. I mean, it doesn't feel great. Uh, it, it's, it's like uh, bending down and touching your toes for a couple minutes every day. Look at, my, look at the thumbs. See, they're not, they're not here. It's not like this. It's expanded outwards like this. So if you can just do that, that will be the first step in developing spider fingers. Uh, in addition to watching the upcoming exercise that I'll show you. But um, I, I just want to explain a little about why this is important. The reason it's important is because if you look through Chopin's music, um, this nocturne that, uh, it, you know, in addition to just about all of his other pieces, you'll find that you really need to stretch. Their five finger positions are virtually non-existent in Chopin's music you need to learn to stretch. This is very important. And I've, I've found through my teaching experience that pianists don't stretch enough. And they always want to use the excuse that they have small hands. Everyone wants to claim they have small hands. Well, not every, it's not true all the time. A lot of pianists who claim they have small hands really don't. Look, I have small hands. I, I, I have short and stumpy fingers, actually. But I can reach an octave, okay? You should be able to reach an octave like this without playing at the ends of the keys. So if you can reach an octave, try to reach an octave here, putting your thumb here in the midway between here and here and your fifth finger about there. Don't try to avoid doing this. This is what amateurs do, okay? That's, that's not good. 
keep your thumb out of there. And generally speaking, the thumb should be here with all the time. Okay, never put your thumb here. The only time, the only time I can remember putting my thumb here is if I if I have to play a tenth somewhere like C to E. Well, I can't reach it like that. Pianists with long fingers can do that. I can't. So I can I can reach a tenth if I'm at the very ends of the keys here. A ninth I can barely I can just barely do a ninth up here. But to play a ninth really well, you know, usually I play out here. But so it's just more proof that I really don't have that long fingers. But an octave I'm very secure with. So you need to become more secure with octaves in the playing of Chopin. So if you aren't good with octaves, I would suggest, you know, octave scales and so forth. There are many, many octave exercises you can find on the well-rounded pianist. Um, but, um, so you need to learn octaves, your, your ability to reach octaves without playing at the end of the keys. And every day, do this every day, on either on a table or on the, on the piano keys. Just stretch your fingers out as far as they'll go like that. Just, you're, you're going to feel some tension in there. You want to make it look like a starfish, okay? Like a starfish, like that. And, and you can even do this with your other hand. You can, you can, you can separate them and go like that. Stretch it out a little bit. Stretch it out a little bit stretch these out a little bit like that and you know you want to develop the ability to really have that flexibility in your fingers to play Chopin. Now uh, the next section we're going to go into um, a, special, a special spider exercise that I've developed especially for the playing of Chopin so stay tuned for that. Okay, so let's start our spider exercise here that I've developed. We're going to start on C and then play G with the second finger. Release your thumb. You're going to play C with the third finger. Release the second finger and five on G. So in this exercise, we're only going to play the first and the fifth. We're going to C and G. We're not going to play the third. Okay, so we're going to leave the third out. And we're going to do this back and forth a few times. Look at the wrist. Right here. The wrist is going to rotate actually more than the elbow. So, so the elbow won't necessarily go out that far, but the wrist rotates. I call this like a cartwheel motion. You'll be like a cartwheel like this. And the fingers are almost straight. They're not totally curved because the more you stretch out, the, the less curved your fingers will be. Okay? Now we'll go to the first inversion. We're going to start with G, then C. Now we're going to go to G with four, not with three. Four, five. One, two, four, five. Once again, rotate with your wrist here. This is a cartwheel motion. Look, when you're on your fifth finger here, your thumb is up here, okay? When your thumb is down here, your fifth finger is here. Never, never close your hand up like this into a five finger position. Always keep outstretched. One of the biggest errors that pianists make is they close their hands up. When playing Chopin, you especially need to be open all the time, practically all the time, open. Now, I'm gonna to go to the next. Repeat it about three times, and the next one here. So we only have a root position and a first inversion. Now we're going to put all those together, just one time each. Remember, four, three, five, 
five, four, five, three. Okay, now we're going to do all that with the left hand. We're going to take five, three on G, two on C, one on G. Look at the rest. Remember, this is the cartwheel motion. Your 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 fingers are acting more like that. So don't do not you won't curve them like this. You curve them like this when you're in a five finger position. Okay. But now we're expanding them like this. Okay, now we're going to go to the first inversion. We're going to start with G here. Five, four, and four, two, one. And now five, three, two, one. First inversion, five, four, two, one. Remember, your fingers will be almost straight. Almost straight. Okay? Now we'll do all that with the left hand, all in one sweep. mistake pianists make is they do this. They, they put their thumb either like this or way at the end of the white key. Try to play at least here or here, somewhere in there. Avoid that at all costs. See, watch this. Watch my thumb. See, the thumb plays here. It doesn't, it doesn't go here. Okay? more like this and play your thumb up don't play it flat so you're at about a 30 degree angle when you play your thumb do not play it flat it's another one of the biggest mistakes pianists make is they play with flat thumbs okay now we're going to put hands together actually let's uh, repeat this first many times necessary. Now keep your hands open. Now we're going to put start with G here. Five, four, and then here four in the right hand. Repeat as many times necessary. Then we're going to start with C. Three. to the first inversion again, five, four. Now we're going to put that all together. placement of the fingers when you're on the black keys, but it, by and large it's the exact same distance that you're, play, that you're playing your hands, your fingers. So that playing this in, in the key of C with all white keys is, is exactly the same distance as when you're on the black keys. The only difference is you have to be a little careful, with, more careful when you're on the black keys because the black keys are a little 
uh, thinner than the Y keys, so it's easier to slip off of them. But it, it's good to practice the spider exercise in both white and black keys. You can do it in every any of the 12 keys you want. But we're doing it here just in C. I would suggest to start with do it in C and then in D flat. So you have all the white black keys. You can also do it in D and E flat and so forth and so on. So this is a spider exercise that I've developed uh, for more of these types of exercises. From many more actually like this. Uh, you can find those on the well-rounded pianist. And in the next section of this uh, tutorial we are going to uh, go over some uh, pitfalls with the use of the thumb in, in this nocturne and also just in general because you have to really watch your thumbs, especially the thumb placement, when you're playing a difficult piece like this nocturne. So stay tuned for that section coming up. In this section of the tutorial, I just want to just run through just very quickly the last section of, of the Nocturne. And I, I want to just explain, you know, I'm not really going to play everything perfectly or anything, but I just want to explain the placement of the thumbs. The thumb is what I regard as the anchor of the fingers, the anchor of the hands. And uh, the probably the, the, the most egregious error committed by piano students and even professionals. I, I've seen even professionals or people who think they're professional do this and, and, and it's the place putting your thumb at the end of the white key. You need to avoid that at all costs. So let's look at the beginning here for example and, and, and by the way all the left hand we're going to play non legato so there are these legato lines here. We're just going to ignore those because everything in the end will be pretty much non-legato except the, some of the melodic lines on the top. But watch my thumb here. Okay, now first of all, when you play it in measure 49 here, the first C octave, when you're playing this octave, do not play it here. Okay? Play it here. Even if you have small hands, you need to learn to stretch. Okay, so your your thumb is here. Then you you're gonna play five two. Now, many pianists would do this. They they instinctually want to move out and play two here. Well, then then look what they have to do. Look how far the thumb is from its destination. Then you have to lunge forward. So. You're, you're stuck with doing this. And, and that's terrible, terrible economy of motion. It's awful. <laughs> do not do that. Okay? Play this here. Keep your thumb there. See, you, you want to always prepare your thumb for the black keys. Keep your thumb in line with the black keys. So, thumb here. Thumb here. Now watch, I'm playing the, just the left hand, watch the, the thumb, watch this one, 4, 1, you need to learn to play an octave with 4 and 1. I can do it, and I have small hands, okay, I don't have long fingers. I've learned to stretch through spider exercises, okay, and through many years of playing the piano, so, but don't do this, don't do or that, don't play your thumb here, like an amateur would do, play it here, play your second finger here, and your thumb here, even if you play, have to play five here, even if you have to do five and you can't do four, still try to play your thumb here and not here, okay, it's the same with the, the whole thing, it's like that. So, keep tabs on your thumb. Keep your tabs on your thumb. Always, okay, look here, I'm in the middle of measure 51. Don't do this. See, most pianists would do this. Or, I'm sorry, it's there. Most pianists would do this. But, but you want to be up more. I'll, I'll 
also another thing is keep your thumb up at about a 30 degree angle. Okay, so forth and so on. So going through this, your thumb, also the right hand, I don't go here. A lot of pianists, when they play the white keys, they all of a sudden go back. And then they have, when they have black keys, then they have to move forward. So notice how the thumb thumb is always there. All, the thumb is always from here to here. From here to here. In both hands. The thumb is going to be from here to here. It's not here. So avoid playing your thumb here. So occasionally, just occasionally, it might be necessary to move the thumb out, but try to avoid that. Uh, so uh, in the next section, we'll just... Uh, We'll focus on some three against four polyrhythms on this, but very, very important. The most important thing you need to do is the thumbs are anchors of the hand. You need to have those correctly placed, not at the end of the key. You know, I can't say this enough, uh, so I'm going to say it a million times. Anyway, stay tuned next for the three against four uh, patterns that we'll work on. This section here on Chopin's Nocturne is especially uh, just to isolate the passages where we have three against four. Uh, this is a difficult section for most pianists. Um, most, and very often it's, it's difficult because of the three against four polyrhythms. You know, if it were all triplets, it wouldn't be that bad, but you know, Chopin has to throw in four against three. And these should be played mathematically correct. You're, you know, you're, we're not just going to estimate them. So in order to play those, I would highly, highly recommend watching my video on three against four and four against three polyrhythms. If you haven't watched that, watch that and master those because I'm not going to explain here in this video how to play three against four polyrhythms. You'll have to go to my polyrhythm video to do that. And in this video, we're just going to isolate all those passages. So I here measure 50, right here, the last two beats of measure 50. Let's try that again. I'm going to play this tie, by the way, the D on the top. So. That's a perfect four against three rhythm, four in the right, three in the left. And play both hands. Both are staccato. You hear how the right hand's a little faster than the left? And we'll just keep it at that speed. Now the next is in measure 52 uh, on the second beat. Now, this is a little tricky one because it has that, has that grace note. I would suggest first doing it a few times without the grace note. So, I'm not going to the last 16th note in the right hand. Uh, you would just do that, but just to get the solid 3 against 4 rhythm, just do that. Okay? And I would suggest going over just these isolated passages several times a day. Several times. Just isolate these. Okay, next we're going to 
go to measure 54. It's the, sec uh, the third and the fourth beat here. I'm going to play the tied note on the top, the tied F here, so. Once again. Beats three and four and measure fifty nine. Once again, notice my thumb placement as I discussed in the previous section here. See that the thumbs, the thumb is here, not here because the thumb has to go here to, to this E flat. So, so if you play your thumb here, then it's, you can get it very easily to the E flat there. That's economy of motion. Okay, uh, the, the 16th notes in measure 60 are not polyrhythms. Those are actually two in the right hand against two in the left, so we won't do that. Um, the, in measure 64, the 7, I would suggest just 3 plus 4. So I would suggest 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, one. Actually, I would do. It's not really a polyrhythm. Now we're going to go to measure 66, the third and fourth beats here. I'm going to play the top note here. Uh, it's got that extra grace note. Let's do it without the grace note first. suggest just that. Then after you do it without the grace note, just insert, insert the grace note before the beat. Like that. Da da da. Okay, then we have beats three and four and measure 68. Once again. Once again. It has to be mathematically correct. Anyone that tells you, oh, you don't have to play them mathematically correct, you can just, it's Chopin, it's romantic, it doesn't, don't listen to them, okay? It has to be mathematically correct. Now, uh, in measures 69 and 70 here, this is the most difficult passage here, so this will require the most work. Um, we have four in the right hand, three in the left hand, four, uh, six whole beats here. So I'm going to start from measure... Uh, actually, let's start. Let's start from beat two, of measure sixty-nine. So we have. Excuse me, you can put on the metronome. So I'm going to put it on 96 here. This is about half speed, roughly. Okay, now I'm going to 
do it with the right hand. This is tricky, so watch out here. You really need to know your three against four rhythms here to do this. That's really tricky. Actually, so the metronome is going with the left hand notes and I'm inserting the right hand notes around the left hand notes. Let's try that again here. This is 96 on the metronome. Okay, you need to do that several times a day. I know when you do it half speed with no pedal. By the way, everything here is with no pedal. For now, we're, we're going to add pedal later. Um, when, it, when you do it at half speed with no pedal like this, it sounds very mechanical. You're going to think, oh, that's not romantic. That doesn't sound romantic. You shouldn't do it mathematically correct, but that's wrong. You should do it mathematically correct. Once you speed it up, you do it two times the speed and you add pedal, then it's gonna, it, it, it won't sound mechanical at all. So this is the right way to work on these four against three rhythms. Now one more here before we go on. Uh, measure 72 uh, beats three and four. So we have... Uh, I'm playing the tied note. land on the downbeat. Now we have beats three and four in the next measure. Once again. Okay. You need to work out your own fingerings. I'm not going to give you fingerings because uh, it this video would be too long for that. Now in the next section, stay tuned for that, in which we will uh, we will put everything together, both hands, and we will play from beginning to end of the last section with the metronome. This section here is uh, a complete performance from measure 49 to the end, and with metronome, no pedal, and this is approximately half speed or so. This is around 96 per uh, eighth note in the left hand, uh, approximately half speed, maybe a little less than half speed. So uh, this, this is a good speed to practice at, half speed, it's what I call super slow. Uh, for more super slow videos, uh, many of them actually, you can go to the well-rounded pianist. Now, I'll put it on 96. Now, bear in mind, it's going to sound mechanical. It's going to sound mathematical. It's not going to sound nice. It's not going to sound romantic. But this is this is all the nuts and bolts that need to be put in place. So of course, you know, we're we're not we're not making the nice romantic dinner music here. We're putting the nuts and bolts together. Okay, so put your metronome on 96. And no pedal at all, none and everything will be non legato or staccato, okay? Except sometimes the melody note, actually, uh, the melody note will be brought out. So listen especially to the melody notes as you bring those out with the fifth finger, the top finger. Also, keep tabs on the thumbs. Watch my thumbs. Never do the thumbs go back here. They're always here, ready to play the black keys. That's called economy of motion. Also, watch the spider fingers. My fingers are always opened up. Always open up. Never close up your fingers. Open them up. Okay, so let's uh, play through this without talking. Measure 49. Oh, one more thing. Pianissimo. So don't, don't play too loud. Okay, so try to play kind of soft.
top. stop the metronome when you get there when the left hand I mean the right hand has only 16ths I just wanted to test myself to see whether I could do that uh, there were triplet rhythms with the metronome but I was trying to play quadruplets in the right hand that's not an easy thing to do but you you see that that's what you need to do to get the nuts and bolts together for this piece then that's about half speed with no pedal so what you need to do is gradually speed it up and um, I'll, I'll give you those speeds to do after I play it again uh, with uh, at the same speed. Actually, we're going to do the same speed without metronome with pedal and that will be uh, the final section. So stay tuned for that. Okay, in this final section, we're going to uh, remain at about half speed. Okay, so that'll be about uh, 96 for eighth note for the left hand, or actually for, for everything, but 96 will be the left hand beat. By the way, that's 32, okay? So if, if you, th this, this only goes to 40, okay? So most old-fashioned metronomes only go to 40. If you happen to have an app, uh, or a metronome that goes below 40. It's 32, actually. So if you can, if, if you want to do it with a large beat, put it on 32. But I would suggest remaining at 96 because 32 is a hard beat to hear. It's really slow. The slower you get, the harder it is. So uh, I would just recommend being at 96 per eighth note in the left hand, okay? Or per triplet eighth note of the left hand. Now, what we're going to do is this. I'm going to play it at this speed, but uh, I'm not going to play it with a metronome. But here, here's the thing. I'm going to test it with the metronome at the beginning. Then when I get to the end, uh, I'm, I'm going to test myself again with the metronome to see, you know, if I stuck with that speed. So, of course, you know, you don't want to speed up, slow down. But also bear in mind that the finished product, you'll, you'll add retards, you'll add slight, you can stretch it out here and there. So just because you're practicing with a metronome doesn't mean you have to play it exactly metronomically in the finished product. Because especially here at the end, ritenuto, you can slow down a little bit at the end. But for our sake, for putting the nuts and bolts together, we're going to use the metronome just to, just, just so we can use it there. But Bear in mind that you can you can slow down a little bit there at the end. So we see dun, dun, dun. Okay, no talking. I'll stop talking. I'll play it with pedal. Now with pedal.
And now I'm going to turn the metronome on and test myself. Yeah, I stayed pretty close to that, actually, from beginning to end. It's, it's easy to want to speed everything up, but I tried to remain to that beat. Now, notice something. Notice that even when you keep a relatively strict beat, the variances in dynamics and the coloring and the balance between the hands will create the illusion that you're not, and also the four against three rhythms, will create the illusion that, that you're playing with rubato. But you're not really playing with rubato, it's actually strict. So that's one of the uh, great things about Chopin's music, is you don't need to, to do a whole lot of uh, messing around with rubato because it's written into the music. If you follow the dynamics and get the shadings right and uh, the ritenuto and rallentandos and, and, and all of that, uh, it sort of takes care of itself. Okay, so now I would recommend this. Write these numbers down. So we did 96. Now uh, you need to practice it next at 108. That would be 108 per eighth note in the left hand, or that's equal to 36 beats per minute per large beat. Then after you can do that, then go up to 126. 126, that would be equal to 42. Okay, 42 beats per minute. So you would have four beats at 42 beats per minute. That's 126. Then go up to 144. That's equal to 48. And then go up to 168, and that's equal to uh, 56. Uh, and, and, then, and then I actually up to speed would be 192, about 192, which is about 63 or 64 per large B. That's about up to speed. I don't think you, you know, you want to be somewhere between 60 and 70 probably, I would suggest. So, um, good luck on everything here and do put the nuts and bolts together because that's going to help you. And for more tutorials like this, overhead views, go to The Well-Rounded Pianist. And until we meet again, thank you.